Hey friends, I am so excited to share this recipe with you. We're gonna make cinnamon twist bread. First, we're gonna use one and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast. Then we're gonna add two tablespoons of warm water. I like to just use tap water so I can control the temperature. You want it to be about like bath water, not too hot and not too cold. So whisk that together to kind of help it dissolve. I'm using a Danish bread whisk, which is really helpful for this kind of recipe, but you can also use a wooden spoon or a spatula. I'm gonna add one cup of warm milk. I use whole milk. Also, one fourth cup granulated sugar, one egg. Whisk that around so that your egg breaks up a little bit. And then we're gonna add our flour. We're gonna do it gradually. So go ahead and fluff it up. Uh, you can use all-purpose flour. I'm using bread flour today. The total amount will be anywhere from two and a half to three cups. Kind of depends on the humidity in your area and how your flour absorbs the moisture. We're gonna add one third cup of melted butter. and half a teaspoon of salt. Your dough is gonna be very sticky at this point and loose. So we're gonna go ahead and add another cup of flour. Whisk it in gradually. What we're looking for is for the dough to form into one ball, pulling away from the sides of the bowl, but we want it to remain sticky. So just keep adding bit by bit, whisking as you go, and you'll get to know exactly what the dough should look like when it's ready for its first rise. See how it's pulling away from the side? but my bread whisk is still fairly sticky. So we're gonna cover it with a damp cloth and let it rise about one hour or until it's doubled in size. And then I'm gonna flour my work surface well. Because we kept our dough on the sticky side, we're gonna need to make sure we add plenty of flour as we roll it out. So just knead your dough a couple of times to get it kind of smoothed out. We're gonna be aiming to roll it out into a rectangle shape. So go ahead and pull it out into a loose rectangle. If your dough snaps back and doesn't want to stretch, cover it with that damp cloth for about five or 10 minutes and then try again. It'll relax. Now we're gonna roll it out into our rectangle I like to use this wooden rolling pin. I find that the dough doesn't stick to the rolling pin when I use it. Always roll from the center out and always make sure that your dough isn't sticking to the work surface. Add more flour as you go. This just takes a little bit of patience. You'll find that it's not something that can be rushed. You just work it out, working from the center to the outside edges, patting the edges back in where you need to, feeling where it's thicker or thinner, and just trying to get it into a rectangle. It doesn't have to be perfect. The size of the rectangle you're aiming for is about 22 by 15 inches, but I've made it so many times and I don't measure anymore. It doesn't have to be exact. Now 
now we're going to brush the top of the dough with soft butter. You want your butter to be soft enough that you don't tear holes in the dough as you're brushing it on, but I think it's easier when it's not quite all the way melted. When the whole surface is covered with the melted butter, then we're ready to add our cinnamon and sugar. So first, one third cup of granulated sugar, and I just try to sprinkle it kind of evenly over the surface. Make sure you go all the way to the edges. And now for the cinnamon. We're gonna add anywhere from one to two tablespoons um, you want to make sure that you are generous with the cinnamon, especially if you really enjoy that flavor. Then starting with the long end that's farthest away from you, roll up the dough, kind of tightening it as you go. Add more flour as needed to the work surface. And then as it's rolled up, you can kind of feel that maybe there's one area where it's a little thicker, so you can pull and stretch to get that a little bit more even. Pinch the seam with your fingers down the length of the roll so that it will stay closed. Then we're gonna divide the dough in half. So now we have two rolls. I like to use just a really sharp knife for this. And then to make the twist loaves, we're gonna cut down lengthwise. Now I left just a bit still attached at one end and this just makes it easier to work with as you're transferring it into the pan. So just a simple twist, pulling it around itself, kind of having those open cinnamon layers at the top and inverting the end that we left attached so that will be exposed as well. I like to use a bench scraper to help transfer the dough into the loaf pan. I've prepared these loaf pans with parchment paper and sprayed them with nonstick spray. So once again, Twist it around itself, invert the end, and transfer into your loaf pan. At this point, we're gonna need them to rise again. We're gonna want them to be covered in a warm place. Um, in Arizona, it's really dry, so um, it may be necessary to add a layer of saran wrap to help keep the air in. So now they've doubled in size and it's time to bake them. So we're gonna put them into a 350 degree preheated oven and we'll know they're done when they're nice and puffy and they're deep golden brown. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and make the icing. One cup of powdered sugar, one tablespoon of melted butter, half a teaspoon of vanilla, all whisked together. You're gonna get a crumbly mixture before you start to add the water. Usually it takes one to two tablespoons of water. Just add it gradually because you want the consistency to be where it falls off the whisk in ribbons. You'll know it's just right when it it's not too drippy, but falls off in a ribbon like this. When the loaves have baked, we're gonna transfer them to a cooling rack. Use that parchment paper to help you remove it from the loaf pan. 
And then I like to use the parchment paper underneath the cooling rack so that when I put the glaze or the icing on, it doesn't drip onto the counter. they've cooled just slightly, we'll go ahead and drizzle on that icing. Now, if you're gonna be serving the cinnamon bread later, you may want to ice it just before serving and hold off on that step. It makes it a little bit tricky to store the bread when the icing's on. But I know this is gonna be devoured right away, so we'll go ahead and put it on now. Let's see what it looks like inside. Oh, it is so light and airy with just hints of cinnamon and sugar. It's just delicious. <laughs>